Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to solve this uh, Nikko 139 uh, word break. So this question was very popular. It was asked by Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, and all these companies. And uh, let's take a look at my example. And if we are given a string, Nikko um, is a one string. And we have a dictionary, lit and code. and the function should be able to find that uh, there are two words in the dictionary, lit and code. If we can, uh, if the if we can find the two words in dictionary, it return a true. And say I'm in here, apple, apple pen, apple. So all the three words can be found in here. So the word can be duplicate. However, in this one, cats, cat, and dog, or cats, and without the D, dog is false because we cannot find N in here. So we can solve this by using uh, a recursive function. Basically, what we can do is to uh, search, for example, this word, and so we scan through until we find the complete word, and then the rest will be thrown into the dynamic programming, and we will do the search on this word, and then start at the stop pointer all the way to the end to see if you can find something matching. So, and this is the dynamic programming. Code. As we can see, so we first convert uh, the word dictionary to the set because the dictionary was given as a list. So we convert it to the set. We can improve the efficiency when we look it up. And when we write up a recurse function, we first put in on the uh, termination condition where if the starting position is equal to the length of the String and then we return the true, and then for the ending position, and then we try in different ending position starting from the, uh, star plus one to the length of the list plus one. And be careful about here because the range does not include the last value, and also in here it does not include the last value as well. That's why we have to uh, put a length of the string plus one. This last element that will return with the lens of S, and you put the lens of S will be actually the starting point to the lens of S minus one. And then, uh, we, if that portion is in the uh, word dictionary set, and then we recur recursively call the function by putting the, the end point as a starting point of the, um, of the next recursion. So we recursively calling this uh, recursion function, and then the starting point will be uh, at zero. And uh, this is gonna work for this test case, but it's not gonna pass um, the lead code, um, all the test cases in lead code, because it takes too long. The problem is that it takes too much um, Recursion. It takes like a bit of uh, two to the power n because there are so given a, a string of length of n, there are n plus one ways to split it uh, into two parts. So at each time, at each time step, we have a choice to split it or to not split it. So in the worst case, when all the choices could be checked, uh, the result could be big of two to the power n. The space complexity will be of n, so this is a depth of um, and it's a stack of recursion that is outstanding. As we can see, uh, time limit exceed. But if it's just should really pass for the, this particular test case, but it does not pass for this one, the very long one. So, uh, but this is a good starting place that uh, can help us to build up the intuition. And, uh, 
the interviewer might ask, how can we improve, improve this algorithm? And, uh, in, in a way to do it is to use uh, dynamic programming, uh, which allows us, um, save all the intermediate step. So when we do the same thing again, we just have a lookup instead of uh, redo the whole thing. So let me re let me implement the dynamic programming for you so you can see how it works. So this is the second method by using a dynamic programming. And uh, we first uh, have a um, memoization uh, list has none everywhere. And the recursion is the same as before. And however, if we found something that previously calculated means the, the memorization, there's something in it. And then we don't do the rest because it just can retrieve from the memorization list and that can significantly save the runtime. And uh, this function was the same as before. However, what we do is after we finish this for loop, meaning that we don't find a uh, good combination and uh, we will fill out the memorization to be a false statement so that we can save the intermediate step and uh, without the need for future um, duplicating the work so that can significantly save some runtime. And uh, Python, uh, not Python, Nico accepted the, this solution because as you can see it's pretty efficient. By using dynamic programming, uh, the complexity analysis uh, is shortened from two to the power n. Now it's the n to the power of three. And uh, you don't have two nested for loops here. We have only one for loop and plus some recursion calling. And but the time complexity is the same as this official solution. And the space complexity would be uh, big O of n, it is depending on uh, how many times we have to call, call the recursion and they will put in the st stack. And also you need the memoization that save the intermediate steps. And now we finish this approach and then let's uh, look at the last approach where we can use the, the DFS to do it. So uh, the set is the same as before. We have a scene set, uh, and then we have, we have a queue uh, that is storing all the starting positions. And then uh, the starting point is will be um, the starting point is um, is zero because we're looking at the first character. And we have the scene set that keep track of uh, the position that we have been seeing, so we don't duplicate our work. And while, and now let's do the the BFS while there's something in the queue, and we have a starting point equal to queue dot pop pop from the left because this is a queue and Q is first in and first out and then we can and then we can set up some boundary condition if starting point is equal to the end point and that's a term in, um, this is termination condition where we can uh, is returning a false so this function this entire function should finish and, and in terms of true because we already found the, the end of the string. And also if the starting point is in the scene set, that means we have already previously seen it. So we don't duplicate our work to save some runtime. And we can do a continue to uh, search for other elements in the queue. And then, We do similar thing that we have done before. Search for the endpoint, for endpoint in this range. If this um, 
portion of the string is in the dictionary that means we have found something and in that case we can put it in the queue queue dot append and then the endpoint so the endpoint will be the new starting point when we loop it through the queue and however uh, don't forget to because after we run finish this for loop we have we finish seeing the starting point so the scene set just collect the point and oops, no offense we add at this starting point because we are just finished seeing it just so we don't forget our work so this one is where the termination condition if we return to true the whole thing will finish however if this part is not touched uh, we have to return the false at the end okay Let's see it runs so this is a, uh, a bfs approach and accept it so uh in terms of bfs approach um the runtime complexity is the same as a uh, dynamic programming and you can, as you can see it's not exactly uh as an official solution but it's quite similar it's a pretty similar idea um so the Time complexity is a bit of n q. So for every starting index, the search can continue until uh, the end of a given string. And so uh, the space complexity is a bit of n, so that mostly comes from the queue. Yeah, so that's so much for my solution. I hope you like it. Hopefully I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.